Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Yana and this is The Scented. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys my perfume storage and I'll just walk you through how I store my fragrances because a lot of you guys have been asking me how I store and display my fragrances since I'd mentioned that my collection is over 300 fragrances. I also have like a ton of fragrance oils, so I'll show you how I keep them organized, how I have everything displayed. I did get a nice little storage organizer for this awkward nook that I have in my room that I'm about to show you guys. So before that, it was just an awkward empty space in the wall and I happened to buy like an organizer shelving unit that fit perfectly in there. So I set that all up and I actually, filmed it or so I thought except that I didn't turn on the record button so I was gonna do a time-lapse video of how I organized all of it and none of it got recorded so I'm just gonna show you the after and I don't have it before unfortunately but I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff around my house so I'm gonna do a little home reno vlog later on for now I'll just give you guys a quick tour of my room and we're just gonna hang out and I'm gonna do this the way that I don't usually do. And instead, I'm gonna go behind the camera and kind of show you how everything looks. And so let's go on this little room tour with me, my little fragrance storage room tour. So here is the nook that I was talking about and you'll see on the very top level, I have my beautiful box of Roses Forever and I have a Dior and Chanel bag and the Dior bag actually has some fragrance oils that I'm gonna show you guys. On the second from the top level, I have a little container of all of my decants that I've purchased and some travel size bottles, as well as a natural wick candle and my Bois d'Argent from Dior and my little Dior minis on the shelf there as well. And as we get closer, I'll show you guys what's in each of those little candle containers. Then I have all of my fragrance oils, my little jewelry boxes, my selenite lamp, so let's get closer in and I'll show you what's in everything. So I'm gonna take you guys closer in and just show you what I store in all the containers and what I have on display and walk you through why I chose to keep those on my feature storage cabinet. I also have a few really, really nice accent decor pieces that I wanna show you. So let's get further into it. So I have my big, big arrangement of Roses Forever up here. I keep it up at the top because it is just so large. I think it looks the nicest up at the top. In my Dior bag, I have some fragrance oils. These ones, I'm still working my way through. So here's what their new packaging looks like. Just to give you guys a sneak peek, I got Fleur Narcotique, which I told you guys I absolutely love, and I've been using this one. Anyway, so I'm playing with these oils, and I'll do a video on that later. Up here, I have this little... Actually, what I like to do is I take candles, and when they burn out, I use them to store fragrance samples, or in this case, I actually cut up some watercolor paper, and I use it as blotters. Watercolor paper, I was tipped off by a friend that watercolor paper makes incredible blotters. The scent that sticks on the watercolor paper is way better than tissues or cotton pads. Watercolor paper is the thing to make blotters out of. Helpful hint. Another candle made blotter holder or sample holder is this. So in here I have a whole bunch of Dior samples that I got when I purchased my Bois d'Argent. And then I have all of these samples, like this is Midnight Poison. These were very kindly sent to me by my friend, uh, Perfumed Angle. He has an amazing fragrance gallery on Instagram. Yeah, there's the original Dior Homme Intense in here. There's the vintage from 97. There's Eau Sauvage, like amazing fragrances. I made some really great discoveries through the samples that he sent to me. So thank you so much to him for sending them. And yeah, I'll, I'll review them all at a later point. In this used to be candle, I have all of the Jules et Mad fragrances. So I have this one, which is Secret de Paris de Rouge. This one I absolutely love. I'm gonna also be doing a full house review on these. I just need time to play with them. So 
These ones I'm storing in this former candle. And yeah, I accidentally scratched off a little bit of the paint, but it's okay, we turn it around and we hide it. So basically what I display here are fragrances that I wanna be using and getting a lot of use out of and playing with. So like lots of samples, I wanna make sure I have them out on display so that I don't forget I have them because I have a really bad habit of forgetting that I have fragrances, like fragrance samples, decants, things like that. And then I never ever use them because I'm too busy using my bottles. Let me know if that happens to you guys. Like, don't you have a massive collection of samples and decants and don't end up using them? I find that having them out on display really helps with that. So in this former candle, I have all of these little decants. I purchased a lot of them from Max Aroma. This is Delina Exclusif. I have my Clean Reserve. This is the Skin fragrance this one's really pretty i really like it it has a nice cotton candy kind of vibe it's a little bit salty it's really good and especially for a clean fragrance then i have my little narciso roller ball so i decluttered my larger bottle of the narciso eau de parfum if you guys haven't seen my declutter i'm going to link it up at the top for you and the reason why i decluttered it was because it gives me a little bit of a headache and by a little bit i mean a lot of it and i just can't wear it but i think it's a beautiful scent so i keep the little roller ball around because that way i can really like wear a little tiny bit with the roller ball so yeah i still have the fragrance i just have it in a teeny tiny version so i have the serge lutin Chergui. i printed my own labels because the labels that come with it kind of wear out over time i printed my bottega veneta and this one actually smells a lot like Gris Dior from Christian Dior's private collection they smell so similar except that the bottega veneta has a leather accord which isn't present in the greedy or but they're such nice like oak moss patchouli fragrances they're very dry very very elegant and i love them both they're really quite similar and then i have parfums de marley Cassili, which honestly i don't care for at all it's kind of a tropical flower scent and it smells a little bit cheap to me but i do love the delina exclusive that i also have in here so Back they all go. Then of course we have our Bois d'Argent, which I keep safely stored in this container. And I love this fragrance. I did a comparison between this and Bois d'Iris. And yeah, this is just a beautiful clean iris fragrance. I really love it, especially in the winter time. It has a nice myrrh note. I really love myrrh as a note in fragrances. It adds a lot of depth. I like that resinous kind of rich scent that it provides. So Bois d'Argent is one of my absolute favorites. So hence the very large bottle. Then we have all of these little guys, little Dior Privés. I have the best Dior rep in the world and she hooked me up with all of these. She is literally the nicest lady in the world. So yeah, I'm just so lucky to have the best Dior rep. She gave me a bunch of those little decants that I showed you that were in my little candle. And now I have Rouge Trafalgar, I have Feb Delicieuse, Dior Amour, Oud Rosewood and Lucky and I am very lucky to have all of these. I'll get to play with them. I'll get to review all of them for you guys later. But of all of these, my favorite one is Rouge Trafalgar and it smells like berries and pine. It kind of smells Christmassy in the sense that it smells like a pine tree, even though there is no pine note. There's black currant, there's grapefruit, but there's no pine note. But on my skin, it comes through like these tart berries and pine. And it is just like a refreshing burst of just like, it's not sweet, but it's like, it's just very unique fresh berries with pine. Like that's the best way you can describe it. And yeah, I, that's gonna be my next full bottle. Third, my third full bottle after the one that I just ordered. So it wasn't Rouge Trafalgar that I ordered, it was a different one. So yeah, later this year, I will be getting Rouge Trafalgar though. And I saw that they came out with a new one. They have tobacco color. So it's supposed to have tobacco and plum and it's the brand new release from the Dior private collection that's coming out this year. I think they have it in the States now. I asked my Susan and she said they don't have it and she'll let me know when they do have it. So hopefully she will hook me up with that once it's out. And yeah, I'm very excited to try that one. So of course I have my Stairway to Heaven, which I've told you guys I absolutely love. This is such an amazing brand that I've discovered, which is Jules Mad. I love this fragrance. It's like a burst of cold air. It's fuzzy and clean smelling and a little bit sweet. And it reminds me a little bit of Tom Ford Metallique. 
Then I just keep my box of Byredo back here just because I think it's pretty and the only non-neutral color decoration that I have is this little owl because I love owls and he says do more of what makes you happy and I just keep him around because he's super cute and those are words of wisdom. So then I have all of my fragrance oils here. This organizer I got on Amazon and it is a life saver because I can see all of my oils, I can rotate it and it's just the best thing in the world. So I'm gonna link this in the description box for you. I have two towers like this and I think it's technically supposed to be a lipstick organizer but I use it for my oils because they fit perfectly. All my oils are from Oil Perfumery and they're just the best ones. So those are the only ones I have and those are the only ones I keep on display. So then here I have my little jewelry organizer. So I'll just quickly show you what's in here. I keep my little geode crystal up here because I think it's very pretty and my little Swarovski compact mirror in here. And I need to declutter a lot of this, but yeah, I just basically have a lot of jewelry and then a little bit more jewelry. If you guys want to see my jewelry collection, leave me a comment down below and let me know because aside from like random costume jewelry, I have a lot of really nice Swarovski pieces and some nice gemstone pieces. So if you guys want to see, let me know. I don't know if anyone's interested in seeing that stuff, but I got a lot so I can do a little show and tell if you want. Back here, nicely tucked away, I have another candle holder that just stores a whole bunch of samples, but they're a little bit unsightly, so I just keep it tucked away in the back. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of Sephora samples in here as well. There's a lot of samples. And I have my beautiful Mikalev book, and then they wrote me a personalized note when they sent this to me, which was very kind of them. And so I'm playing with all of these as well. And yeah, I'll eventually review all of these for you guys. There are so many fragrances that I'm trying this year that I'm gonna be reviewing and more from the house of Mikalef to come. I have Ylang and Gold, which I love that I've mentioned to you. And then the other one that I really love is called Gayak. And I think it's getting discontinued because I saw it in their clearance section. So that one I am dying to get a full bottle of. It is so good. And it reminds me of Theorema by Fendi, which as you guys know, is one of my also favorite fragrances that's been discontinued. I'd been on the hunt for that fragrance. I finally got a bottle and then I smelled Gayak. And I was like, hey, this smells like Theorema. And so, yeah, once Theorema runs out, I'll have Gayak, but it may not help me much if Gayak is also getting discontinued. It's just such a good fragrance though. Back here I have my little Dior box and it's just cause it's pretty. There are samples in here as well. I have the Essential Parfums collection. Essential Parfums I'm playing with, so far all of them are very good, simple, clean smelling like pure fragrances. They smell really, really good. I have my samples from Frisai that came with my order of Blondine, which I'll show you guys in a second. I have not played with these yet. So then I have my jewelry organizer here and I got this one on Amazon. I have my Ana Luisa jewelry, all my little Ana Luisa necklaces, my beautiful Swarovski necklace, my Swarovski cocktail ring, this is my favorite ring, and some of my favorite earrings. I just store them on here. And then I have more jewelry here. I'm not gonna get into that now. There's a whole bunch of jewelry in there in my little mirrored organizer. Down here, I got the Blondine. So here's my Blondine, I absolutely love it. It smells like buttery lilies and suede, and it does stay close to the skin. So I've worn this to work a couple times, nobody noticed, but I, I smell it on myself and I loved it. So this one I'm I'm working my way through. It is so beautiful. It just, it is kind of a close to the skin scent and it's not very long lasting. That's my only issue with it. But other than that, really beautiful fragrance. And so down here, we also have a little jewelry organizer that I got on Amazon. And I have my YSL Libra and the Libra Intense. These two I tend to wear quite often and I like to have them on the tray because it looks pretty with all the gold. And I'm also working my way through all these Goldfield and Banks samples. So I've had Pacific Rock Moss before and I really love it and it's just not very long lasting but it's one of my favorite freshies. I really love Velvet Splendor for myself. 
I love the Bohemian Lime. So far, I've worked through that one a little bit. It's more of a summer scent, but it's very pretty. I also really like the Southern Bloom. Desert Rosewood, I'm not a fan, nor am I a fan of the Wood Infusion. White Sandalwood is all right. I do like it, but I don't like these two. The Wood Infusion and Desert Rosewood, they're not for me. And the Blue Cypress one, that one was really, really good as well. Probably just as good as Pacific Rock Moss, just a little bit more intense. Where Pacific Rock Moss is a little bit softer, Blue Cypress is a little bit more intense, but they are kind of similar in a way. So yeah, I'm really enjoying these samples, working my way through them. So I have them just down here. And over here on our final tray, we have our Elangan Gold, which I keep safely in its box. But there it is. I also have my Balda Freak, which I reach for quite often. This is one of my favorite fragrances. I have all of my favorite fragrances up on display in this part of my room. So that's why I keep saying this is one of my favorites and this is one of my favorites because I use them a lot, so I keep them out. And I have my Wood Sage and Sea Salt Oil from the Fragrance Shop. This one is my favorite Wood Sage and Sea Salt Oil. Whoopsies, I wasn't even under the camera. This little guy is like 70 bucks, but it does last me quite a while. And so I've only used about half of it, just a little more than half in the couple years that I've had it. Probably about three years that I've had it now. And this is my little Gaiac from Mikalef that they sent me along with the Ling and Gold. And this one is the one that I was talking about that smells like Fendi Theorema that I think that Mikalef is discontinuing this one as well, which is such a shame. And this is just a little decant. This is not what it looks like when you buy it. This is just a nice little decant that they sent me. It just says Gaiac on the very bottom there but I think that they just manually decanted this. So this is the first area of all of my fragrances. Now let's go to the big cabinet. I'm gonna stay back here while I film this part because there's a lot and there is no room for me here. So let's start up at the very top. This shelf here at the very top are fragrances that I don't use as often with the exception of Black Platinum from Banana Republic and these are all store brands. So I have my Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works over here. I have Zara, I have the Men's Zara in the back. I have my Banana Republics which I actually really like and I keep them more close to the front. And then I just have some randoms back there like by Rito Blanche, I have the Christian Siriano Oula Rouge. And then I have this random spot here that I don't know what to do with it. And this is just random decants and samples and more oils. So yeah, I just keep this in the corner so that I can see it. It doesn't look very nice on the big shelving unit, so I just keep it over here. And yeah, so those top fragrances are all store brands for the most part and then a couple random ones that I didn't know where to place. On the second shelf from the top I have a lot of men's fragrances as well as some really nice niche fragrances. So I have the Menth Fresh right here from Healy. This one I really love. Like I said before it smells like spearmint, juicy fruit spearmint gum. I have the Zest de Gingembre. These are in order of how often they're used. These are often used by my man, so this is kind of his shelf and mine together. And a lot of these are ones that he and I both use, I guess, together. Not at the same time, though. That's weird. And then, so I have the La Mondiere over here. This one smells like a green almond. Back here I have Hippie Rose, which smells like a dirty patchouli rose fragrance. It kind of smells like the name would suggest. Over here I have my replicas. So the replica fragrances that I have are Coffee Break. Again, these are in order of my preference. So Coffee Break is first, it is my favorite. Then we have Lipstick On, I really love it a lot as well. Then we have Lazy Sunday Morning and Beach Walk and Bubble Bath. So these are the two that are really the only ones I'm really fond of. We have the Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum back here. It's a popular one, as you can see. I got the MAC 
Ruby Woo, which smells exactly like Tuscan leather from Tom Ford. I don't know what's the deal with MAC copying Tom Ford, but it's a thing, I'm telling you. And then we have our Versace Dreamer, which is also very popular. So moving along, we have our Bulgari Black, our Burberry London, Pie, as you guys can see, is a very popular one. We have Pie Extreme that was recently added. This one's not as good, still nice, but not as good. This one has hits and misses. This one is the Bulgari Ote Noir. This one is sometimes good, sometimes it smells like wet socks. Then we have Prada Lunarosa Sport, which is extremely popular. I absolutely love this. We have the Gucci Pour Homme 2, which is a tester bottle, came without a cap, is also very popular. I like to wear this one myself. Unfortunately, it's super hard to find now, but it is such a gorgeous fragrance. It's like a, a tea with cardamom, very fresh, a very unique freshie. I wish it was still around. And we have our Dolce Gabbana The One, our Dior Homme Intense, our Dior Homme the original, and of course our household favorite, Lum Num Num. We got that here. We have our Chanel's back here, our Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme, our Bleu de Chanel, which is almost finished as well. He is an oversprayer like myself. We have our Boss. We have our YSLY, which is not a popular one and will probably be decluttered. And then I have all of my diptyques here. So I have the Tam Dao, that's more a men's one. Uh, L'Ambre dans l'eau, it smells a lot like Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. So that one I believe is getting discontinued. This one smells a lot like it. So I was gonna get the Flora Botanica, but it's just too similar, so I did not. And we have the Eau Duel, which is popular with myself and with him, so that one's quite used. And yeah, some of his favorite fragrance oils, so these are the ones that he's been reaching for, so he keeps them out. And we have Oud Wood, of course, this is my favorite. Silver Musk is incredibly good, it's a Nasamato oil dupe. Black Afghano, also from Nasamato oil dupe. Russian Leather, Regent Leather, Maskabari. This is an Arabian fragrance that is actually a really good oil dupe. I've never smelled the original, but this is like a salty, kind of aquatic musk. Really good, like I just smelled it right now. Oh my God, this is such a good fragrance. Like this is one I would definitely recommend from Oil Perfumery. And then let's move down to my main shelf. So we are gonna start with the Surf Lutin corner and I have my Surf Lutins back here. So I have my, I have, these are in no particular order. I have my Vierge de Fer, which I love in the summer, but it's not being used right now. So it's in the back. I have my five o'clock Eau Gingembre. I have my Datura Noir, which I have a backup bottle of cause I've had this for three or four years now and it is quite low. I do use this one often in the summer and I really, really love it. It's like a beachy, like slightly tuberose, coconutty, really beautiful fragrance. I believe there's jasmine there as well. Really, really good. Like Datura Noir is one of my favorites. Then we have Fleur de Cetronier, which I don't really like all that much. I actually purchased this secondhand. I also have Dame Blonde, which is a really nice, supposed to be a suede smell, but to me it kind of smells like a sauna. It smells to me like a cedar sauna, honestly. It's really good, but it's more masculine, I would say. I don't reach for it too often myself. And then we have A La Nuit, which is a really animalic jasmine. I had purchased, oopsies, these are not cap lifting safe. Alanui I had purchased already very used, so I did not use all of this. I must have used this a couple times. I purchased it for 30 bucks and it was already like pretty much at that level. So it's a really animalic jasmine, like interesting, intense. I like it, but I have to be in the mood for it. But if you like Alien, you may like Alanui. It's more, even more intense jasmine. Then I have Je de Peau, which is smells like a bakery. It smells yeasty and it smells like a bakery. It smells like freshly baked croissants. And let me just sniff it. It also like, it smells like 
when you're baking bread like when you're mixing bread it smells kind of yeasty like it's very unusual very interesting kind of like butter and bread like a fresh bread that comes out of the oven kind of like that and i have all my joe malones and they're a little bit messed up i have my velvet rose and oud back here i have my white jasmine and mint that one i love for the summer i had got it just towards the end of summer and so i haven't used it too much I have my mimosa and cardamom, which I also really enjoy. I find it a cool weather scent, but I wore it to work the other day and someone told me that I smell like the beach, so that was interesting. I have my nutmeg and ginger, and then I have my little guys back here. So I have my orange bitters. It, it smells like bitter oranges, like on Christmas. Then I have my nectarine blossom and honey. It smells exactly like you would imagine. Blackberry and Bay. I really like this one. This one smells very expensive to me. I like that herbaceous mix with the blackberries. I have Earl Grey and Cucumber, which is a very refreshing tea scent. I have a little baby with sage and sea salt, which I prefer the oil, but I've already used quite a bit of this as well. And Wild Bluebell, which is kind of a boring floral if I'm really being honest, but it was a points perk at Sephora. I have my Zara Tonka wood, which I have re-poured because the actual bottle, the atomizer broke. So I had to pry it open and then I had to re-pour it into this. So over here we have our Dolce Gabbana, the classic red cap, which I really enjoy. We have our Zadig and Voltaire. This is her. It's a creamy sandalwood scent. Bois d'Iris, which I said smells like Bois d'Argent, and I did a comparison on those two, so I'll link that video for you guys. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is Fleur de Bamboo, and this is only here and not on the big display because I wear it more so in the summer. I have my Nishani 100 Silent Ways, which I wear often as well, so I have it up at the front here. And I have all of my Chanel's and I don't know why this is empty. I think I removed one because it was in a video list and I forgot to put it back. I have my Chanel number no. five low, my Coco Mademoiselle's, my Coco Noir and the original Coco de Parfum. My favorite of all of them is probably the number no. five low and the Coco Noir. I have the Coco Mademoiselle Night Fragrance. This is weak performing and not as good as the original Coco Mademoiselle. I have my almost empty Gabrielle Essence, which I really love. I have the discontinued Miss Dior Cherie Low. This one's really lovely, too bad it's gone. I have my Bon Bon, I have my Flower Bomb Midnight and my Flower Bomb Extreme. Flower Bomb Midnight is also really beautiful. So these are the two that are like my favorite flower bombs. So we have all of my Mon Guerlain's. I have literally all of them. I have the Floral as well, which I just added not too long ago. I heard this is discontinued. My friend Alithia from The Simple Chic Life really loves this one. So I got it secondhand from somebody and I paid $40 for it. And so I haven't worn it yet, but I will. My favorite one, as you guys know, is the Bloom of Rose, which I've worn quite a bit of. I also like the Bloom of Rose Eau de Parfum, but I don't reach for it as often. So this is my favorite one. I have the original in the limited edition gold bottle. I have the original in the Eau de Toilette. I have the original Eau Sensuelle, which I've used as a lot as well. These two are the ones that I use the most. Then I have my Guerlain Terracotta Le Parfum. I have my Chanel Chance Eau Vive, my Burberry Her and Burberry Her Intense. I do prefer the Intense, but it depends on everyone's skin. I have one that I used quite a bit when I first got it, and this is the Chloe Love. This has been compared to Guerlain Insolence. I actually cannot bear Insolence, but this one I adore. So it's just a very clean purple flower powdery scent. I have the classic Chanel Allure, which I ended up paying 20 bucks for because I bought it at Shoppers Drug Mart and I had a whole bunch of optimum points, which if you guys don't know, optimum points are points that are like a loyalty points program. You collect them and then they have bonus redemption events. So basically it was one of those and out of pocket, I ended up only paying 20 bucks for the Allure. I have my Gardenia from Guerlain, my cruel Gardenia. This one I really love. I got it at Fragrance Buy. I think they only had a couple bottles. It's just such a beautiful musk scent with Gardenia. It's really, really nice. I also have my two from the Les Eaux collection. I have the Paris Riviera. I bought a used bottle. And 
then I have the Paris Biarritz, which I also bought a used bottle, but not quite as used. Let's work our way further down. Here we are on the fourth level down, and I have a whole bunch of nice clean scents over here. So these ones I rotate when they're off season, I put them here, and when I don't know where to put them, I put them here. So I have all of my Elizabeth Arden white teas. I was gonna do a comparison video, but I've never got around to it. I have all of my Bulgaris there as well. I'm not gonna speak too much about each one. I'd rather do an updated perfume collection for go through each house and do a house collection review instead of talking about them too too much right now but yeah i have of all of my omnias that i have are over here so i have all of my aliens right here except for the salted caramel which i still have in the box i have my alien essence absolue which i've had for quite some time i have my original alien but in the limited edition bottle i have my alien eau sublime flora futura and in the back i have my mfks so i have my oud satin mood right here and I have my Baccarat Rouge beside it and I keep them in the back because that's where it, they are least likely to get damaged or break. I have my Maison Lancome right here. So I have my Jasmine's Marzipan as well as my Rose's Berberanza. I love my Jasmine's Marzipan. It's so good. I wear it often, especially in the cold. It's just this yummy, delicious, sweet Jasmine scent. I have my Olympias, the original, and the Aqua Leger. I have all of my manifestos, which I've tucked away so that they don't get damaged by the light because I do wear them often, but now that I've been testing out all these other fragrances, I wanted to keep them nice and safe. I also have the Elixir, which was a hard find, but I found it and I love it, but I still love the original one more. I have my Not A Perfume, which I use often for layering. My Bottega Veneta Eau de Velour, which I use quite a bit as well, especially in the colder months, hence why it's in the front. This is my Fendi Theorema. The one that I was telling you guys smells like the Gaillac from uh, Mikalev. This is my unicorn fragrance that was so hard to find. I love this one. I had been blabbering for so long that my battery died, so I just swapped batteries. So as I was saying, Fendi Theorema, that's my unicorn fragrance. My mom used to wear this before it got discontinued. Then I found it, now I wear it. Basically, that's the story. I have all of my Narcissos back here. I have the Fleur Musk, the Rose Musk, the Essence, the Rouge, the Poudre, and the For Her, but the Eau de Toilette. Then I have my two Nina Ricci's. This is the Rose Absolue and the Rose Extase. I have my J'adore Infinisme, which I love. I absolutely love this new release. It is such a good J'adore flanker. My Lilac Path, which I'm gonna be wearing in the spring. My Pivoine Sujo, which is nice, but kind of boring. Moving downwards. On list level, we have our Parfums d'Orsay, we have our Chloe, we have a whole bunch of Guerlain fragrances. I did a Guerlain collections video, so you guys can check that out. I love my Tiazura, hence why it's at the front. I love my little Eau Fraiche, but it's almost done, so I have a backup bottle that's larger. I have Dior Addict, and then the older formulation. I really like the older formulation. I have my Moschino Toy 2, which I really like. It smells a lot like Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. I keep it nearby. I have my YSL L, which is all right. And I have my Cinema, which is also all right. So yeah, I have a whole bunch more oils here, ones that I don't reach for as often. And yeah, just a whole bunch back here. I didn't even know I had these. Pulp, 11th hour, I don't like these at all, honestly. Sundazed. Byredo is very hit and miss for me. There's also Opera from Suspiro, which I guess I wasn't a fan of. So I, I keep back here ones that I don't really reach for often. I do actually really like the Gucci bamboo, but I wear it in the summer. So these ones are like partially seasonal rotation, partially ones that I don't reach for often. And now we're almost at the very bottom one, which is the biggest mess. So here we are in my darkest corner of my perfume storage and the Jo Malone bag is really just boxes, just a whole bunch of different samples, some from Killian, some that I purchased, some that I got randomly, just, just a random bag of stuff. Got my minis over there in the corner, my little flower bomb minis, and 
a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not using right now. I have more oil samples over here. These ones I purchased from, these ones came from Arabian Perfume Oils and I guess I just forgot that I have them. I have more from the fragrance shop that I forgot I had. And basically whatever you see here are just ones that I'm not really using. The only one that doesn't really belong here is the MAC Turquatic, which I am just waiting for summer to wear it. And I actually really like this one. This is Mont Blanc Emblem. And this one is just a really nice fresh rose scent. I actually really, really like this one. I just checked, it's called Lady Emblem. This one I really like. And it's a really cute bottle too. So this one and the Turquatic don't really belong here, but I had nowhere else to put them. The Burberry Black I used to love, but there's something about it now that irritates me. And this is the Elixir version. This is not the original Burberry Black. This is actually the Elixir version. It's a lot richer and heavier, but now yeah, I'm just not reaching for it. So yeah, and then I have the Cloud. I have a whole bunch of other stuff, a couple men's ones back there. They're just gonna hang out in the back. That's pretty much it. I have another closet. I call it the Closet of Doom. We're not gonna go there today. It's just more random stuff, stuff that I haven't gotten to yet, but this is all the stuff that I'm working with right now. So that is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my room tour and perfume storage tour. It was more of a perfume storage tour. I know I didn't show you my entire room, but we'll leave that for my home reno vlog, which I'm chipping away at. And we didn't go in the closet of doom today, and we'll save that for another day as well, because that truly is the closet of doom. There are fragrances that I don't know what I'm doing with, or ones that I just received that I'm, I don't know where to place them. I don't know what, like they're, they're pending. That's my pending slash doom closet. So ones that are on their way to be decluttered and ones that are brand new are in that closet. And a lot of them are still in boxes and it's just a complete mess. So you can imagine, and we'll leave it at that. And yeah, the ones that are on the bottom shelf in the closet that I just showed you guys, those are like, some of those are like kind of on their way out. So once they reach the bottom shelf, like the way that it works for me is they kind of jump around and then eventually they make their way to the bottom shelf. And once they're at the bottom shelf, they are at risk of being evicted, AKA decluttered. So that's, that's the bottom shelf is you either stay and you maybe work your way up or you or you're evicted so unfortunately that's just it's a hard knock life for fragrances in this house and that's that's just how it goes when you have over 300 fragrances you have to be very picky as to which ones get to stay because it's dangerous before i know it it's gonna be 500 fragrances and then six and then you know i just I won't I will need to dedicate an entire room so now I'm trying to like scrutinize my collection a little bit more this year is the year of really nitpicking and selecting and curating my collection and I do still want to have a collection I don't want to narrow it down too much but I'm only gonna be bringing in ones that I really really love or ones that I know are valuable in terms of review and maybe like offer something interesting to the table but I'm really digressing here. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to grow my collection too much more. So you're gonna be seeing some declutters as well this year. And if you have any pointers of how you think I should organize them better, please leave me some recommendations because I'm always trying to organize them in a better fashion. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing an updated collection or if you wanna see like, fragrance house collection reviews, I can do that as well because I feel like we went through a lot today. Like I've filmed for over an hour and I'm exhausted and I hope this video isn't as long as I've been filming for, but there's really not that much to edit out. Anyway, that is it. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and please subscribe. If you guys haven't already, make sure to hit the notification bell too. And that way you guys will never miss a video. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.